Hi, Eddie. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? And um, you know, this is for salesing.com, and we want to talk about the Nogus 15. Uh, tell us a very brief summary of yourself, and then let's get into it. Yeah, I'm Eddie Cox, and I, uh, you know, work for Malgus. You know, the Malgus 15 is kind of my, you know, main focus there. So excited to talk about it. Okay, and you got a big award this year. Right, boat of the year from Sailing World, right. which was great. So I think, uh, you know, it feels good to kind of have that reinforce what we've known for a long time. You know, that the 15 is a great boat. So felt good. And uh, lots of sales, this thing has taken off, isn't it? Yeah, it really has. So, you know, we, we're coming up on two years and we've sold over 400 boats. So, uh, and we haven't launched the boat in Europe yet. So uh, that's coming up soon. And if people were looking for strong fleets, a couple of the key areas would be? Well, really all over. Oh. You know, if you're looking for a boat, you know, I really recommend reaching out to us and we can connect you with your local dealer. They can kind of point you towards where fleets are started but it's such a new boat and it's such a awesome design that if you want to start a fleet at your club it, this is the boat to do it in you know it it fits everybody so you can go into your club we can hook you up with a, a boat to try for a couple of days get a bunch of people sailing in it and i think you'd be surprised that a lot of people are very receptive that that's happened all over the place i mean i think we've got over 20 f established fleets now so so we're talking from the Sarasota Sailing Squadron in Sarasota, Florida. We've got a really strong fleet here, a lot of excitement with the boat. We've got this uh, three three regatta series down here. We're at, at regatta two. Yeah. You won regatta one. Pretty expert in the boat. Let's talk about, uh, for salesing.com, most of our customers, a lot of our customers are scow sailors. Right. Which obviously is another really strong uh, set of boats for, for Nogus. Right. Talk to us about, from a scow sailors perspective i'm trying to get into a melgus 15 what are the sort of things that i'm going to expect to have to transition and understand right well i'm going to start with the similarities because there's a lot of them right so melgus our bread and butter is scows right and we think the scow hull shape is second to none right so we wanted to incorporate a lot of those great things that we have going on with all of our scow classes into the 15. you know the the so the first one for us you know, if you're an e-scow sailor, this boat's going to be just like a baby step for you. You know, the angles downwind are very similar. The tactics downwind are very similar. Uh, with asymmetrical kite, the systems are very similar. So that, I think that's a really huge benefit of this boat, especially for clubs that have e-scow fleets. This, this boat is like a baby trainer for the e-boat. You can put someone in the front of this boat, and they can hop on an e-scow, and they can do the jib. And they can do the kite because they know all the systems. The, the doing, doing the front of the Malgus 15 is really, really easy. There's not a lot of loads, you know, so you can kind of introduce someone to crewing easily. But, you know, in terms, in terms of scow sailing, I think it's a great kind of training boat for, for the e-scout, really. And then, you know, you look at the MC, which is, you know, the, the largest one design adult class in the country. I mean, it's huge. And the great thing about the MC is the stability of the boat. And that's what you get with the 15. And that's why it's great for so many different ages. It's, you know, it's a small 15 foot boat, but it's super stable. And that has a lot to do with, you know, our kind of scow background. We wanted the, we knew that to have a successful class, we had to have a stable boat. So, you know, the 15 really touches on that, so. Yeah, I came from the MC scow most recently. And I noticed that, that even though I'm really uh, new to flying a kite, yeah. The boat was very forgiving. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I was shocked by is the loading pressures, even on the main sheet, are not very heavy. No. It is not a hard boat. Uh, it's not a labor to run. It's more of a mind and agility. Exactly. Yep. And a lot of technique downwind, right? Which I think is good because, you know, for a lot of people that come from different classes like you, you know, you come from the MC, you step into the, the Malgus 15, you know, the downwind sailing is a whole new thing right and you have to learn the angles you have to learn how to you know use the apparent wind so i think that's really good i mean that's a big goal of ours with this boat is to help the sport progress right we look at american sailing and it's stuck in the mud right so we wanted to like oh you know our solution to every problem in sailing is to build a boat that fit, we're boat builders right so that's what we do right you know other people sailing instructors have different solutions but that's ours right and we think that this boat will help progress the sport and help raise the level and uh, 
so that's uh, I mean that's really exciting for us. It seems that although uh, yeah build a boat, but the the truth is you're also building excitement. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that's interesting about what I've seen with the Melgus 15 and what sucked me into it is there's and the MC has the same thing. Yeah. There's a ton of excitement. Uh, there's a lot of new learning yeah. available in the Melgus 15. As you say, if you don't have access to an E or an A. Yeah. Well. One of our big goals at Malgus always is to have great class support, you know, and to, you know, like this winter series, right? You know, we're down here, we're doing clinics, we want to make it fun for people. You know, if you're new to the boat, we want to make it fun for you to step into it and learn, right? Everybody's at a different level. So, you know, there's 70 boats out there, you're going to be able to sail, if, no matter what your skill level is, there's going to be somebody you're going to be racing against on the water, which is great, you know. but you know, our goal at Malgus and what, what I think is unique in at least the U.S. is our, our class support, you know, it, it's really second to none. We're at every regatta, we're, we're making sure everybody's, you know, good with their boats, their boats are running correctly, you know, we want to make it as painless and fun for people as possible because, you know, just sailing, there, it's a lot, you know, there's a lot of logistics, so we want to take as much of that out of the equation as possible, so, I mean, that's, that's kind of our our goal with this whole, really with all our classes, you know, but especially like the MC, Malgus 15, you know, we want to be there for our customers and make sure it's fun for them. So. so overall, it's a lighter boat too, which also means it's a good traveler boat. Yeah, for sure. You can dolly launch it, which is key. You know, you can probably get, you can get it on top of like a Suburban with three people, which is cool. Um, but yeah, most people have just like a road trailer, super easy to drive it, you know, so for people that are that are not used to driving boats and trailers, you know, this is, it's a great trainer boat for that too, you know, which I think is uh, really important. And then, you know, there's a lot of people from clubs up north that come down to the series down here and they get together with all their buddies and they buy a stacking trailer or a box trailer. We've got a lot of those and they load the trailer up in the fall and one guy drives it down, one guy drives it back or they pay a U-ship guy to drive it down, which is cool. So it really makes it, I mean, all that makes it more accessible. The transport aspect of it is key. You know, it's a two-piece mass, so it can, the mass can fit inside the boat, which means you can have a shorter trailer. You know, all that stuff's important. So. Or even put it inside of a, maybe a truck or something like that if you're putting it on the roof rack or something. Exactly, for sure, yep. So how do you see this fitting in with uh, youth sailing and um, think about things like the Fort Funny 470s that people might encounter in college. How right. do you see the Melgus 15 playing a role in, in getting youth up to speed to be great sailors? Right. Well, you know, really initially we kind of saw this boat as like a next step after college, right? So th that was kind of the initial thought, you know, and, and we realized that the only way to build a really successful one design class is to have people that are a little bit older want to sail your boat too, right? Because that's how you're going to get your initial, you know, base fleet out there. So that was really our initial target was like, how do we build something that's inexpensive, that, that is easy to campaign for people that are, you know, straight out of college and, uh, and uh, you know, can easily step into the boat and, and continue their sailing because there's a huge drop off after people graduate from college, you know, and then there's also a huge drop off after people leave high school sailing. And there's a big drop off, at least in the inland, after kids leave expats. So we wanted to catch those kids and give them a give them a route that they can easily step into and continue to sail with their friends. Because that's the big thing that I think a lot of people in these more adult classes don't realize is like that's what like that's why the at least in the inland, that's why the expats so great because everyone's sailing with their friends. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's fun. So we need to we need to continue that and 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 have more than just you know have it be more more focused than just on the on the sailing right we we want to have good parties we want to have a good social scene so you know at least in the inland you know because we're kind of focused there right um, the the big you know kind of goal was to see kids come out of expos and be able to afford. A 15, sell your expo and be able to move, move that money right into Malgus 15, right? Which you can pretty much do with resale values in the expo, and then and then uh, sail that boat for as long as they want, till they're 60 if they want to. You know, we had a great model with the M16, but 
you know, I think that this boat does a lot more than that boat ever did, right? It teaches you a lot more, um, you know, with tuning, with the asymmetrical spinnaker, with setting up your sails, there's a little more adjustability to the boat. So, you know, that was really important to us, like I said earlier, to raise the level. So, you know, that's kind of our vision, at least for the inland, is you step, you know, leave the X boat, you step right into the 15, you're sailing with all your friends, it's fast, it's fun, which is really important to keep kids, you know, yeah. their interest oh, peaked. It just jumps off the water. Right. You light up that spinnaker, it just takes off. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you can you can go close to 20 knots yeah. downwind in this boat, Talk which is... Wait, it doesn't feel like you have to be, like I felt like I had to be maybe a little bigger to sail an MC single-handed yeah. properly, and the 15 just feels like a boat that can handle a lighter crew. Yeah, for sure. Well, we've got a, we've had a pretty good, you know, view of what competitive weights look like, and it's pretty amazing. You know, the midwinters last year was won by a team that was 350, yeah, you know, right. and the last regatta that we sailed, the team was 300 that won. The yeah. regatta before that, the Nationals, which had some win, the team was 285. You know, I think it really comes back to the goal with all these wind design classes, where it really depends on how you sail your boat, mm -hmm. right? So. That, I think, is a kind of a pleasant surprise even to us, the, the ability of all these, you know, this wide range of weights and ages to, you know, are able to be competitive all the time. So, you know, I think an important thing, at least for you sailing, too, is you want to be able to step out of your, um, out of your youth class and sail with a peer, right? Sail with someone that's the same age as you, right? Because right? that makes it a lot more fun. And this boat allows you to do that. So, yeah. um, and in a big blow, it feels like this boat. It, it's not a boat that caps out at the same types of uh, wind speeds. Some some of the boats, if you're a smaller person, right. I'm thinking about uh, guys coming out of college or, or women coming out of college, um, and it starts to blow. It feels like this boat really handles a breeze well. It it does. That was like a huge focus of ours designing the boat you know it's a wind driven sport right so we want to go sailing when it's windy and uh, that's when it's fun exciting right so this boat really allows you to do that you know the the you know I think one of the the biggest things for me that was surprising about the boat you know we went out we did one of the first ever uh, demo sails ever right and we were on Lake Winnebago and we got a big puff um, you know, big knockdown puff. And the team that was on the boat, they were pretty, you know, they were pretty green sailors. And uh, the puff hit them, the boat went up on its ear and it sat there, it didn't capsize. The guy was luffing the kite, the main was all the way out. And as soon as that happened, I was like, wow, this is great. Cause that, that ability of, you know, that forgive, forgiveness that the boat offers, you know, it's in, you know, if you take a new crew sailing for the first time and you go out in a big blow and you capsize the boat, you know, they might be turned off, you know, but if you can take a crew out in a big blow and you can make it fun for them and you can keep the boat underneath you, which this boat allows you to do, it, it, re <laughs> it really can hook somebody for life, right? Yeah, we, actually, we had that experience last regatta. We got knocked over. They actually called us as a boat over. Right. But we were just hanging there, and we were managed, and it was with the kite up and everything. And right. We managed to get the boat back, back up under again you. and go. Yeah. We never actually had to stop, and yeah. And so it was incredible. I was really shocked at how stable it is. That has a lot to do with the, just the overall stability. I think that's like a byproduct of it, right? The boat's super stable when you're just sitting at the dock, standing on the side tank, but that also filters into that downwind sailing. You know, when you're really ripping, and you you know, maybe make a mistake and don't bear away enough in a puff, you know, the boat's going to be like, okay, I forgive you, you know. Are there any particularly unique things about tuning? We're not going to go into any real detail on tuning yeah. here, but um, it's, it's a shorter sail at the foot. Um, yeah, square top main. Yeah, mm -hmm. so are there anything, and it has a GNAV system, a vent yep. from the top. Uh, are there any things you would call out about uh, uniqueness in how you would shape the sail or how you would tune this boat? Yeah, well, there, you know, the the rig's pretty loaded up, right? So you sail with quite a bit of rig tension, which I think is good because it teaches you how to tune your boat, right? And that's what we're missing. In a, there's, we're missing that out of a lot of classes, 
right? But it's also very simple, you know? You put your loose gauge on your force stay, you get it to your base setting, you make sure your rig's even side to side, and you go sailing, right? One of the cool things is we just have a single length force stay, right? So there's no screwing around with your mast rake. They're all the same, right? Which really simplifies the tuning. So simplicity, yeah, that's very important. But then there, you know, the spreaders are adjustable. You can adjust the spreaders in and out. You know, we've done a lot of sailing in the boat and what we put in the tuning guide is what we're sailing at. You know, we're always pretty transparent with the fast settings that we're finding. So, uh, you know, if you look at the tuning guide and you look at those numbers, that's usually what you know, at least the guys from Malgus are, are using all the time. And those seem to be pretty good. Right. Okay. And uh, obviously you won Boat of the Year, but you're also a sanctioned ILAA, Inland Lakes Yachting Association yep. fleet. Yep. Yeah, so people should be looking at this boat and giving it a try. And you said you'll make demos available. Yep. We'll have, if, you know, if you're interested in sailing the boat, there's going to be club races in Lake Geneva that'll be pretty well attended all next summer. So if you want to just go sailing, you know, Give us a shout if you're in the inland and we can get you out on the boat. If you're anywhere else in the country, you know, same thing. Email us and we'll connect you with a local fleet or a local dealer that can help you try the boat uh, or buy one, you know. So if you contact us, we'll, we'll find a way to get you in a boat. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Eddie. Have a great regatta and we'll see you soon. Yeah.